Uh, Richard Douglas Welch, would you uh, care to ask a blessing over our time together? <coughs> I'd appreciate that. Uh, Kevin, I'm thankful for life. We're thankful for all the things that you provide for us and give to us. And for this day, that we can come together and worship you. And tonight, as we learn more about the founding of the country and the principles on which the country was founded, which are your principles, pray that you would give Zach uh, awareness of mind to articulate those to us and we have a better understanding of that and stand firm in, in, in the culture war that's going on in this country. And we're thankful for everything you do for us, thankful for Christ who gave his life for us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, <clears throat> All right, we'll just dive in. Is your mic on the... uh, I thought it did. There you go, green light now. Good? Okay. I'm not sure if we're going to pipe it through this, the house or not, but for the YouTube stuff. All right. Uh, Here's where we'll go this, this evening. Uh, I want to, again, try to draw a correla correlation between the Declaration of Independence, uh, that's what we call it, and the Constitution, because they run on the same track. Uh, I tried to explain a couple of weeks ago there to you that the dec inside the Declaration of Independence is the framework for the Constitution. It's basically outlined. Uh, in it, uh, there there is documentation out there. There's uh, the big the ones with the the uh, paper with the binder clips on it has the Declaration of Independence and Constitution, and then of course we'll do handouts uh, each week. Uh, you know, ideals ideals make good judges. All right. Like when you read your Bible, the Bible, you're, you're reading ideals oh, many, many, many times there. For example, uh, everyone knows Ephesians 5, 22 and 23, right? The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, all those things. Against such there is no law. Uh, who in the room this evening? on a daily basis, is just snapping those off. You, you expense, you're nothing but, but the love bug, right? You are so secure that, that you're kind to everyone. You hit all nine of those every day. Anybody? Those are ideals, right? That we aim for, that we shoot for. Sometimes we hit it, sometimes we don't. Uh, who has read Proverbs 31? That has been a that has been a a lever and a fulcrum for women for centuries, because it's like that's the lady right there, right? You know what what's happening in Proverbs thirty one, right? There's a conversation to a son. This is the kind of woman you want to look for, someone who's godly and who's going to pursue God. Uh, so those are those are ideals. We don't always right, raise to the level of our ideals. Have you ever been convicted by Scripture? Because it spells out the ideal, and here's what I am not doing. So when we hear words like, in order to form a more perfect union, it means we're working some things out. Here's the ideal, and here's practically what we're working toward, because we are flawed, faulty, feeble, and fickle. So keep that in mind when we go through these things because <clears throat> what current culture will want to point out, they will, they will tell you of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence, how many were slave owners and how many did this and how many did that, uh, which is true. Which is true, and there, there are some of those in, that signed the Declaration the majority of them profess faith in Christ. 
But there, there are some that signed the document that had no profession of faith whatsoever. So they want to try to elevate those to try to minimize or to marginalize the others. So be careful. When we're dealing with ideals, let the ideal be what it is. And they're, it's really ideals are, are great judges. And <clears throat> don't beat yourself up so much over where you fail, but look at the things that you can work toward. Just like when you read Scripture. Do you read Scripture and go, oh, man, that, that kills me. I, I'm never going to read it again. No. You, 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 oh, okay, I'll take that and I'll start applying it to my life and eventually I'll be able to live it where the rubber hits the road. All right? Because you're a work in progress. You're, you're incomplete. And you're a mess. So am I. I'm a mess. All right. So <clears throat> uh, later, one of the things, for example, I'll show you... Uh, <coughs> When we, when we get to the Constitution and the amendments, when we get to the, like the three-fifths clause, that's actually a nail in the coffin 80 years before slavery is ended. And I'll explain to you why they did that. And even slaveholders uh, offered that uh, amendment. All right, here we go. Here's the basic overview, overview tonight, what, what we'll strive to accomplish. Uh, we'll look at the, the first general rule or the first uh, authority cited in the Declaration. There, there are uh, orders of authority. You wear that? Military guys. Let's see, I see at least three, four of you. You know the difference between a command and a direct command? Is there a difference? If, if, you, if you're working for your sergeant, your sergeant says, Bud, go do X, Y, and Z. Well, Bud's going to pick up and go do X, Y, and Z until the colonel shows up and says, listen, I need you to go here. And Bud would say, well, Sergeant Masterson told me to do this. And he'll say, but I'm telling you directly, come with me. What are you going to do? Uh, hopefully you don't end up in the in the stockade. All right. So when we we're going to talk about first authority and general rule, general rule cited in the uh, in the Declaration. Uh, I'm going to have you see how many times and places you can find the mention of God in the Declaration. Uh, he's spoken of as lawgiver. He's spoken of as protector. He's spoken of as uh, as judge. And then we'll examine. Uh, the word nature, just a little bit, from uh, 21st century view and try to ratchet it back to the uh, 18th century view, okay? Any questions before we, before, before we roll? All right, here we go. So, when you think of nature, what is nature? Because words really are really cool. I know when I was a kid, my mother took Reader's Digest Y'all remember those days? And one of my favorite things in there was not only pithy points to ponder, but improving your word power. I think it was something to that effect where you could read words. Uh, my older brother, who's, who's fluent in five different languages, studied Latin, Greek, and Hebrew at the same time. Blows my mind. And when he talks to you, he can talk to you in, in Latin, Greek, Hebrew, German, Spanish, French, and just carry, he's, he's smart. I didn't get that gene, apparently. I got the, I got the tall gene, and uh, he got the smart gene. But um, when we, uh, uh, words are fun to explore. So, when you think of nature, all right? What, do you, what comes to mind when you think, because nature is, is huge, okay? Let me just give you an, give you an idea. <clears throat> nature can be as small as a little tiny seed, all right? Because what's, what's inside that seed? 
Huh? Life is in that seed. Remember Jesus says, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it can't give life, right? So there's life inside of that little tiny seed. Everything it needs to grow and develop is hardwired into that seed. And we put it in the ground and it pops up and then we, we feed ourselves with it or we clothe ourselves with it. So it can be as small as a tiny seed. And when we think about Nature, it can be as vast as the cosmos. All right? You see that? So when the, the framers talk about <clears throat> the laws of nature and of nature's God, what are, you see they're talking not only about the, the big stuff, but they're talking about little too. All right, so they're trying to establish first authorities. Who's the greater authority? All right? Is it me as an individual? Well, as an individual, I'm sovereign. I've got my spa mass. Boy, is it a mass. But I've got my mass that holds who I am, just like you have your mass who holds who you are, that is unique because it's the only time in history of the of humanity it's going to you're going to be here and you have indel indelibly imprinted on you the image of God so what should i do with that image i should honor it respect it because it's yours all right why because my first authority is my creator so what they're trying to do here is to establish who they're responsible for, to, and accountable to. Because uh, some of the allegations they are making to George over in London, in England, is that he's abusing us. He's taking advantage of us. He's causing harm on the image of God. And he has no right to that. So when they speak of <clears throat> uh, the laws of nature and of nature's God, they're establishing a logical, legal, in their minds anyway, a logical and a legal standing where they can be heard. Because have you ever done that? We'll just write letters back and forth. They've written letters, and every letter they had written is, gets disregarded or things get worse. So the, we've sent emissaries over there. They've been run off. Um, now these 56 guys that are me, me, men that are meeting in, in Philadelphia have a, basically a warrant out for their arrest. If they're found, they're to be arrested and taken back to, to England to, uh, to, 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 to stand trial. All right? So, give you a little bit of an idea, and let's talk about this. What is nature? It's the phenomenon, phenomena of the physical world collectively, uh, the living world, the world itself, the environment, the universe. But primarily, uh, I'm focused on anything that is alive, anything that's living. When, as far as this document. Uh, is concerned. We're, we're focused on <clears throat> anything that is living. Uh, what is, what would you say, this is free, can you talk to me for a second about the validity of equality, E-Q-U-A-L-I-T-Y, equality, and this phrase, laws of nature and of nature's God. How are we all equal? Rick? Yeah, well, this was also written, that was written as a rebuttal to the divine right of kings versus, you know, subjects. And so they're saying... We're all created by the same God, and we are created equal. We have the inherent characteristics equally. 
no one's above the other. Okay. So what does equality mean? Apparently, King George has a lot more resources. He's got ships at his disposal. He's got, he's got divisions and, and armies at his disposal. He has the might of the English Empire behind him. So he has silver and gold and all the resources you can think. Does that make him... Uh, above his subjects. Not at all. Equality is that we all have an equal starting point. Just like that seed has a lot of them. I know they're, they're not, no two seeds alike, but they all have within them life. All right? Uh, here's another. Give you a definition of, of nature, the basic or inherent features of something. All right, so we're getting it right down to the cob. When he's talking about, when they're talking about nature, they're trying to, to draw us all to a place of equality. So those inalienable rights that we have are ours, whether I'm a wealthy planter, uh, work in the tidewater of Virginia, or I happen to be a, a, a fisherman on the shoals of Massachusetts. We're all the same. Whether I happen to have uh, Irish descent or I'm full-blooded English, uh, we all bleed the same. We all have the same gifts. So, uh, whereas uh, in uh, with with kings and subjects, you got to keep everybody in 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 their particular place. Uh, Rick mentioned a couple weeks ago about the uh, uh, the Western mindset that that we are privy to that we think, and he was talking about other mindsets like Middle Eastern mindsets are totally different from the way we operate or uh, those from India. A couple years ago, Trace and I celebrating our 35th wedding anniversary. We're on a cruise with Bob and Mick, and we go in to eat dinner one night at the uh, all-you-can-eat buffet, and there's like eight different lines in those places. So they can feed 500 people in, in an instant. Well, I'm standing in line behind a family of seven because I wanted to get some shrimp. I like shrimp, so I can eat my weight in shrimp. So I'm standing in line with my bowl and plate, and this lady comes up, and she's dressed in, in Indian garb, and she just rams right into the people in front of me. And I'm like, what the what? I don't do this where I'm from. So I just reach up, and I tap her on the shoulder, and I say, excuse me, ma'am. And she shot me a look like, who are you touching me, right? And I said, excuse me, ma'am, but this is not Mumbai. The line starts back there. And, she, of course, she was all frustrated. She went to the back of the line. That was day two of our cruise. Every time I got off the boat, guess who I saw everywhere I went? I was like, oh, she's on the train with me. Oh, she's on this bus with me. What? Everywhere I went, I would always smile and, and say hello to her, and, and she would say something in Hindi. I don't know what she was saying. All right. <laughs> <laughs> would you like would you like to imagine with me what she was saying because there were times I would go hey Trace I wonder what she said today Trace said well just let it go let it go but she never rammed the line again as far as I know but anyway all right uh, what our framers were working off of they're working off of a Latin definition of nature when they read when they uh, when Thomas Jefferson writes that actually there's a you know, there's a committee of five that puts the Declaration of Independence together. Thomas Jefferson does carry the most of the water. Uh, but thank God for people like, uh, uh, you know, the Lees who helped kind of broker this committee to get it started. Uh, so be careful. All I'm saying is this. Be careful about what you want to tear down <laughs> because some of those people have added to where we happen to be today. 
So when we when we they're viewing it from a from a Latin perspective, the word is natura, and it means the course of things. Okay, every living thing has a course. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It has a period where it grows. Then we stop growing this way, and then we start, some of us anyway, we start growing this way, right? And then pretty soon we start to a place where we begin to deteriorate. Do you find that you don't have the same energy that you used to? That you could use a nap? Like, I know a lot of retired guys, I don't call between 12.30 and 4 o'clock because it's prime napping time, and I've been yelled at a couple of times for that because in the middle of the day they like to take a nap. All right, so the course of things, or the natural character, the constitution, the makeup, the quality of. One of the greatest things that could ever happen to us is for us to be fully human. You know what that means to be fully human? To be fully human is that we realize why we were created and we're hitting that purpose on a consistent basis. That's what makes us fully human. So, uh, Paul would say, for example, uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, he gives us a great uh, uh, communication on, on what love is. Love is patient, love is kind. And he goes through and shows us practically what that looks like. When I'm fully human, I'm hitting a, on a lot of those, those facets of what love is. But I struggle I'm stubborn, I'm a man, and so sometimes I stumble. Sometimes I get self-centered, sometimes, sometimes I get a little haughty and proud, and so I bump up against that, all right? So the quality of the universe, literally birth, it's from the, from the word natus or to be born, all right? So here we go. So paragraph one. What is the first authority or general rule in the Declaration? Can you find it? So in the first paragraph, about almost to the almost to the bottom of it, and we'll read it. This is a unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitles them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind require, require that they should declare the causes which impel to the separation. That's the preamble, right? So in there we have our, we have our, our mission statement. And the mission statement, of course, is the separate equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind require that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. So we're not just arguing here to argue. We're not, we're not just quarreling here. There's actual harm that's being done. Now, when there is harm being done to someone, who should you call? An authority figure, right? Someone calls me and, uh, you know, I have a kid from camp or something and I get a phone call from them and they say, well, blah, 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 this is going on. I'm going to do this. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. You could hurt yourself if you did that. Well, I'm going to do it. Okay, what's my next call? What's my next call? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go over that. If someone says they're going to hurt themselves, I'm going to, first thing, I'm, I'm calling the law. I'm calling the law and I explain it to them. I give them all the information I possibly can give them. And then I'm going to hang up from there. I'm going to reach out to their parents. 
If I can get there, I'll drive over there, but sometimes it's 40, 50 miles away, and I'm another 40, 50 miles in the other direction. When someone is being harmed, the authority figure is who to go to. Now, what has the king done? Well, if you read down into the list, he shut down legislatures, so we can't make laws. He has removed judges and made it so difficult for you to get a hearing. And the judges are bought and paid for by whom? The king. So there are folks that have been brought over from England to hear the cases, not folks that live here. All right? Uh, he's forbidding us from interstate commerce, for example. So he's creating some, some difficulties uh, for us that is uh, spelled out, of course, when we looked at that briefly. So what, what we're driving at here this evening is this. Everyone is equal under the laws of nature. Whether you are a monarch or whether you are a pauper, everyone is equal under the laws of nature. In other words, we all came to be in the same fashion. Now, I don't remember how I came to be. I remember when I began to be aware of who I am. I came to be by the will of another, my parents. Same as you. Now, I know every time I would have a birthday when I was a kid, my mother would always recount the, the travail of her childbirth. I was almost 11 pounds when I was born, and I remember one year I was almost 14 pounds. I don't know how I got to be 14 pounds. And I was 62 inches long at one case. I mean, I was almost 5 foot 2 when I came. Mother, you're 5'5", five five. how could that be? But she would recount that. My dad would always say, no, 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 no. We found him on a hot rock when I was running beagle hounds. Uh, behind the house. That's where we found it. We all come to be in the same fashion. So it does not, does not matter if you are a monarch uh, in England or you happen to be a poor colonist here in, in the States. Uh, take a look. <clears throat> I'll give you a clue. In the second paragraph of the Declaration, See if you can find another mention of God in the Declaration. Find it, let me know. Huh? Okay. By their Creator. Yeah. See another one? But all men are created equal. But they're endowed by their creator. Good. All right. So there, there's a couple places. We'll come back to this in just a second. All right. As you read through there, do you see any, any, any other mentionings of God? How about in the final paragraph? Whom they're making their appeal to. See it? Supreme Judge. So, all men are created equal that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, all right, making our appeal as a group of people to the supreme judge of the world. How does God judge? How would you characterize God's judgment? Just, I heard that, okay. God's judgment is just. Would, that, would we agree with that? How else would you describe God's judgment? God's judgment is just. God's judgment is right. He's always right. 
God's judgment is true. Have you read Philippians 4, 6, 7, and 8? That talks about be, be not anxious for anything, but in everything. Pray to your Heavenly Father. And he says in verse 8, And finally, my brothers, whatsoever is true and honorable, noble, any good report, for be thing excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Well, what could we think about? Well, the judgments of God. It's always noble. It's always right. It's always true. All right? Now, again, not every one of the signers ascribe to Christian belief. The majority do. <laughs> but all of them made this, this agreement. All right, there's another place that you can find it in the final paragraph. Final sentence. Divine providence. Okay? You see God all over that, that, that document now? Now, <clears throat> this document works because God is included. And people who don't want any part of God in their life, it'll work for them too. You don't have to be a Christian and be a good citizen. But in order to be a good citizen, you do have to follow a plan. And who's better of this plan, the king in England, who's abusing us, or the supreme judge, the divine protector, the lawgiver of all humanity? You see, I mean, that just seems as plain as, as the nose is on my face. That's, that's the way to go. So, let me ask you this. What branch of government would be the maker of the laws of nature and nature's God? What branch would you say that would be? Who's the law-making branch? There you go. Ding! You got that right. All right? So, the maker of the laws is a legislative branch. Does God give laws? Why does God give laws? Remember we talked about this a couple weeks ago? God gives laws because my heart, according to Jeremiah, is deceitfully wicked. It wants its own way. And so law points out to me my error and points out a better way. Alright? So, the branch of government that would be the maker of the laws of nature, nature's God, would be the legislative branch. So God is a legislator. Hey, does that make, you got that? All right? Want to add anything before I go to the next slide? All right? So what branch of government would be the supreme judge of the world? Yeah, come on. You've had some civics, I hope. That'd be the judicial. And the judicial is, is to be the umpire. Call them balls and strikes. To protect the innocent and to punish the evildoer. To reward those who do the right thing and to punish those who choose not to do the right thing. Does God do that with us? What did God tell? You remember there were two brothers by the name of Cain and Abel? And, and God, God says, look, here's, here's what I want. He's the lawgiver. He's the legislator. So he says, look, here's, here's what I want. I want you to make sacrifices to me. So what happens? Well, Abel does what? Does, does Abel make an acceptable sacrifice? Yeah. Yeah. Kills that lamb that he'd been taken care of. It's precious to him. And he offered it to God. Did God receive that? Yes. Now, Cain, he's a farmer. And apparently, he's got a little pride issue going on. I can, I can identify with Cain a little bit. Like, oh, do I act like that sometimes? So Cain comes up, and what does Cain do? He brings 
produce from, now I like sweet corn and tomatoes. I had my first tomatoes off my vines today. Oh, I'm done. Just don't tell Mickey Hopkins I've got them because she will eat every tomato I got. <laughs> he brings that. What does God do with that? I mean, he was sincere. He worked hard. What does God say? Does God upbraid him because of the beautiful thing that he brought to him? No, I mean, it came from the ground. God says, Cain, you knew the right thing to do. You know the right thing to do. But you choose not to do it. Be careful. Be careful because sin is crouching at the door and it longs to have you. You see why it's so important for us to, to, on this grand experiment that we're in, to remember, yes, I'm an individual, but I'm a part of something bigger. And if I'm part of something bigger, well, then I'm going to give myself to that. All right? All right, so here's the next slide. What branch of government would be divine providence? There's only one to, ch to select. That's why I made this one the last. So you, you'd get all three. And that would be what? Yeah. He's the one that makes it happen. Have you ever had opportunities in your life where God just showed up? You don't know how that happened. And, and a need was supplied. Or you had the words to say. Or, or you were so distraught and then all of a sudden this peace came over you. Or whatever the case might be uh, in your own experience. All right, so when we're looking at this, so we got these three branches lined up. So God is the chief executive, He watches over our affairs. He didn't just wind it up and walk away, He's not a deist, as they used to teach in the mid to late 70s, that, that all the, the, uh, Founding fathers, they were just deists. They didn't, although 40 some odd of them uh, are registered with various churches in their hometowns. Um, so, the objection that our founders are making, the objection that they're making is that King George is attempting to be all three branches all unto himself. So he's going to use these three branches to enrich himself. Because he has a dynasty to take care of, right? Because his daddy was a king before him, and his daddy before him, and his children after him are going to be. So who doesn't want to leave a good heritage for your children? So he is attempting to be all three branches, all unto himself. Now what happens... When any one person has ultimate authority, what's, what's going to happen? Every time. Yeah. It's going to crumble. And you're seeing some of that now with redistribution. Of course, your taxes haven't been raised, but everything else has gone up. That's called inflation. So that's, that's a real quick way you can add an extra 5%, 10% tax and not even call it a tax. So, first flaw with being a human is what? I'm a human. The second flaw of being a human is I'm self-absorbed. Have you ever been to the store and they open a new checkout line? And everybody go just stay where you are. It's safer where you are. Um, I'm usually pretty good at picking the checkout lines. Last three times, I have all, oh, I've failed and failed miserably. And uh, I should have listened to the words of Moses, for Moses said to Abraham, I wrote about Abraham, hearken unto the voice of thy wife, and go to aisle 14 instead of standing in aisle 11. Uh, and I got reminded, well, I, we should have gone. So, anyway. The, they're objecting that the king is attempting to be all three branches unto himself. Is that, is that practical? Can you give me an example from Scripture 
where there was a man who was overburdened and his father-in-law? Yeah. What are you doing? You're going to drive yourself crazy. There's no way you can listen to all this stuff. Okay? So, they set, set up some, some, some judgment districts and things kind of straightened up a little bit. All right. Love this text. There's only one who has the ability to give a law, to adjudicate the law, and to execute the law. There's only one that can do that. Who do you think that is? It's your Creator. I love this text. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hands? Now, don't just think about the water on the earth. There's somewhere in the ballpark they estimate, the U.S. Geological Survey estimates there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 450 million trillion gallon of water on the planet. You can make a hollow of your head, right? You've done that when you've got a drink of water somewhere. You didn't have a cup, so you used your hand. If you was really thirsty, you used both hands. How much water can you hold in the hollow of your hand? Ounce, maybe two. And what happens? It leaks. We got that dreaded Hawaiian disease that leaky leaky out our hand. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Measured the hand, measured the heaven with a span. We're like this. Have you seen how big the cosmos is? Have you ever seen pictures of the Hubble telescope or some of these new pictures that are coming back? And it just seems like it's getting bigger the farther they get out. With a hand, he measured that and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Weighed the mountains in a scale and the hills in a balance. So that's why there's more hills than there are mountains, because mountains are bigger. So you weigh them in a, in a balance in a scale, like we would do fruit and vegetables. This is the one that our founders are talking about. Here he is. He's the supreme judge. He always adjudicates properly. He gives good gifts. He's, the only, he's a good lawgiver. What does James say? What kind of gifts does God give according to James chapter 1? Good and perfect gifts. What kind of gifts do we give even as fathers who, uh, who love our children? Do we sometimes give gifts amiss that don't work, don't fit? Of course we do. So, what, what these gentlemen are doing, what they are, what they are purporting, again, is to communicate this concept of the laws of nature. We are all equal, whether you are a, a monarch or whether you are a, a maid. does not matter. We're all the same. Does that, does that sound like anything biblical to you? Are there free and bond in the church as far as Christ is concerned? There's no such thing as bond or free. Is there male or female as far as Christ is concerned? Is there Jew and Gentile as far as Christ is concerned? Huh. Uh, so as far as people, what's the difference between us? Some of us have different backgrounds and different pers persuasions and such. But we can, we can get along, can't we? Uh, last weekend, I got right at 50 hours of work in three days moving people last weekend. I don't recommend that. Clean a, you pack a house, clean a house. Go to the other house, 
I did not unpack. No. I brought the boxes to you. I labeled them. I'm not doing no more. You do your own stuff. You find it. But we, we hauled it over there. Cleaned the second house. Right? Of course, I got to play with grandkids a little bit, so that was icing on the cake for me. But I'm telling you, I met a lot of wonderful people up there. Most of them are Michigan State fans, but I met a lot of wonderful people up there. And uh, it's like walking into the General Assembly at the United Nations. There is every tribe and tongue and nationality that you run across. And I have to go out of my way to talk to these people because they're interesting. I don't know anything about them, and I, I want to understand them. There was, a, there was a family from Vietnam on 48th Street, like you really care what street it is, but anyway, it's in my brain, on 48th Street, and the kid was, ran out in the middle of the road while I was moving stuff. I come to a screeching halt, and the grandmother came out, and she was saying something. I don't know what she was saying, but she lit him up. So I got out... <clears throat> And the kid's shoe had come off. He was trying to tie his shoe in the middle of the road. So I put flashers on, and I went and helped him, and I walked him over. And that grandmother, she broke into better English than I've ever spoken in my 58 years on this planet. Wow. So we had a conversation. She, uh, she, she's a believer in Christ. Uh, and uh, so we had, we had a really, really good conversation. So they're interesting to me. As a matter of fact, Mia says, Grandpa, do you talk to everybody? I says, yeah. Yeah, because they know stuff I don't know. And they've been places I've never seen. And likewise, when we take all the people in this grand experiment, this contract that we've made together, that we can be one, e pluribus unum, right? Out of many, one. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody likes to have barbecue. I mean, if you want to eat hummus, go right ahead. Don't ask me. I mean, it, it, but if you want to eat meat, call me up. I, I'll dive, or pie, or something like that. There are things I will eat just, just to be courteous, but as far as a preference, there, there's things I like. But it doesn't mean I, I'm... Have you ever run across a, a, a really violent vegan? Like, you're going to die by eating that. So won't you just leave me alone? You go eat whatever you're eating. I'll eat what I eat. We'll love each other. What is this? Forever, forever burgers or something. You know, it's soybeans. That's all it is. It's soybeans flavored to be like a hamburger. That's all it is. If that's what you want to eat, fine. I'll eat my stuff, you do your stuff, but I won't let anyone harm you. You don't allow anyone uh, to do the same to me. So what they're saying is, only God is capable of doing what the king says, what the king is doing. Only God can do it right and justly and perfectly. And this is how we're wired. This is how we are put together. From our birth, actually before our birth, because, you know, God saw me before I was knitted together in my mother's womb. God knows the beginning, the middle, and the end before it even happens. Uh, and so, <clears throat> this idea of nature, of who you are, and not only who you are, but who you can become. Who you can become. Are you satisfied with where you are right now? Are there things you're in about you that you're just like, oh, I don't like that. I wish, I wish I wouldn't worry as much. Or I wish I wasn't a control freak. Or I wish I wasn't this. Or I wish I wasn't so negative all the time. I wish I could stop talking about people. You know, whatever the case might be. Are there things you're working out yet? Good. That's why it's good to have a bunch of us so that we can interact together. And as Paul would say to the Hebrews, uh, let's not forsake the getting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let's consider how we may do what? 
spur one another on to love and good deeds, and all the more as we see the day approaching. So we, we need to be involved with each other and engaged. My opinion, only my opinion. And then I'm going to hush. One of the great catalysts, in my opinion, as to why there's been this huge slide culturally, socially, politically, is because we've disengaged. We just, uh, you, you go take care of that. It'd be fine. Uh, so allow me to encourage you to pursue the power of pushback. And I don't mean to shove somebody over a cliff. Not at all. But just the power of just a little, little, wait. Or, no. Or, I don't think so. Or, have you thought of this? Because there's no nation in the history of humanity that is built on the ideal that this nation is built on. That ideal that all of us are equal in the eyes of God. All of us are unique and precious. And therefore, I should honor and respect that. Everyone else should as well. And that's why we have a legislative branch to make laws. Uh, William Penn says that good men will make good laws and a bad man cannot make anything but bad laws. And the, the thing about in, in our society or our structure, our construct, is uh, whoever you send to Marietta or Columbus or to the school board or to Washington is a reflection of is to be a reflection of you. So I think, you know, we've disengaged or we've, we've eh, let them have it. Okay, so we've given schools, universities, media, entertainment, sports now, which aggravates me. What's next? It's okay to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I don't think so. And these 56 men have shown us how to do it in a logical, reasonable fashion if we'll just take them at their word. And God's word is just chock full of stuff. All right. I'm done. You, any questions? Anything you want to add, Rick? something to be said of the supreme judge of the world. He is supreme. The supremacy of natural law and the absoluteness of it, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the monarch, the king, you know, trying to assert that. Yeah. Good observation. Thank you for your mind. Yeah, we'll pick that up. That's good stuff right there. That's good stuff. Please, if you have something to add, I'm tickled to death to hear it. Because I, I want to learn too. I want to learn too. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. It's about the most precious commodity that you can give. Um, so next time we'll get together and we'll we'll take uh, the concept of equality and we'll run that to ground because you're hearing a lot of that today, right? Equity versus equality. Um, that'd be like <laughs> me getting ready to run the Olympics, the 100 meter run. Just put me at the finish line before everybody else starts.
That's how I would win. It's the only way I could win, because I am no Usain Bolt, for sure. Well, let me pray and we'll call it a day, all right? Father, you are the grand legislator of the universe. You speak and things come into existence. What you say cannot be refuted. You execute uh, your law with justice and righteousness. For your namesake and for our benefit. And Father, when you judge, you judge rightly. Uh, you are not like a shifting shadow. You are not fickle. You do not uh, falter in any way. Thank you for the wisdom of, of uh, those 56 signers of this declaration that recognize that. Even those who have no profession of faith realize that it was logical and reasonable and rational and that it creates a good foundation to stand upon. We're told in your word that if we labor to build anything, if it's not built on your word, it's going to fail. So, Father, may we build our, our existence, our individual existence, on the rock of the truth of your word. That together, as your servant Peter says, that we become a habitation, a place of, of rest, a place, place of security of the Holy Spirit. Father, may your Spirit inspire us, encourage us, teach us, correct us, and may we be good helpers one to another. And it's in Christ I pray. Amen.